All right, are we live? Good. Hey, everybody. We're back. This is J.D. Miller, and I am at Samuel and Galleries. I came in today to uh, do something really special. So I guess everybody knew that we had Brandon Boyd scheduled for his sec second show at the gallery in March. And because of the lovely coronavirus, we had to go ahead and postpone that. Now we are going to reschedule the in-house in exhibition for this fall, but until we have you know, more information, we really can't set a date yet. So, but what we thought we would do is something kind of fun. So we have been receiving some of the pieces from Brandon and we have them here at the gallery. So we decided to go ahead and come in and put a few of them on the wall. And then we've also created a virtual gallery online of the pieces that he has completed so far. So if you go onto the Samuel Lynn Gallery site, which is samuellynn.com, you'll look under that front page, you'll see in the upcoming exhibition, Impossible Knots with Brandon, there's a link to go on and see the, uh, to see the catalog. But right now, hey, we don't wanna hear me talk. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get Brandon tuned in. I have our assistant director here, Grace, which is, who is gonna help me now. We're practicing social distancing. So Grace, can you see if we can get Brandon here? Let's see if this works. Oh, and can you guys hear me? That's the other thing. Brandon, hi. Hey, how are you? Good, we can hear you. Good. Yeah, I can hear you too. How are you guys yeah. doing? We're doing fantastic. So are you in your studio? I'm in my studio, yeah. I'm in the Santa Monica Mountains. Oh, it's not a bad place to be uh, quarantining, is it? Yeah, it's, it's been all right. It's been all right. <laughs> How are you That's, holding up over there? You know, we're doing really well. In fact, um, it's kind of cool. You know, we, we can't have the physical gallery opened uh, just because, you know, with the order from the county and everything. So we're at least shut down till the end of this month. But that's why we went ahead and decided to do what we're doing today. But I just talked to Kristen, our director, yeah. and uh, we just sold uh, a set of the Venculum, the four set, oh, Venculum C. Yeah, so, so it's already, you know, people are already buying your work. So that's really cool. So Venculum C, people, is already gone. If you go amazing. on the catalog, you can see everything that he's produced so far. Uh, but Brandon, we really just got about... I don't know, maybe half of your work in before we had to shut everything down. So yeah. I know you're still working and that we're gonna have a lot more when it comes to your actual in-person show in the fall, right? Yeah, I think if there's any sort of silver lining for this whole thing um, in regards to the process, uh, I think that among other things, it'll be that I'll have more work to bring to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, good. No. We have a big gallery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also have to say that I think it's really wonderful the way that, um, you know, all human beings seem to be uh, adapting to really strange and unfortunate circumstances. You know, there's um, so many of us are in such a weird place and a place of uncertainty and all this, but one thing that it's bringing out is everyone's um, capacity to adapt and to um, innovate in amongst some strange circumstances. And, and this is a perfect example. It's like, we were gonna have an art show can't have an art show, so let's adapt, let's innovate, let's create ways that people can still see the art. And it's nothing's as good as in person, you know, but I think in this moment we'll take what we can get. And so this yeah. virtual experience is kind of awesome. So good on you, JD. Yeah, it's so. cool. So, um, so are you actually in your yurt? I'm in the yurt here. Let me, I don't know if you can yeah, see this. Can, can you tell people? Cause I've never heard of a studio. If anybody's ever heard of the circular tents, called yeah. yurts. Look at this. This is <laughs> so Brandon's it's, studio. It's basically a gigantic tent, but it has like a, uh, it has a frame around it. So this is where I, I paint every day. Um, I also do photographs of friends and things like that. A lot of get inspiration for paintings and stuff um, here, but there's a bunch of the stuff that I've been working on in the more kind of monochromatic realm. Mm -hmm. um, these are watercolor and oil pastel. Um, some of these are quite large and some of them are a little bit smaller. That one will be on that gallery catalog. Cool. Uh, here are some unfinished ones that I'm working on. Uh, should I just take you through some of the ones? Yeah, here? please, please do. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Uh, 
these ones uh, will be there if we're able to do this in the fall. This is watercolor on paper. Um, it's gorgeous. You can see it in my catalog too. So I'm, I'm experimenting with, with different um, ways of utilizing watercolor and different shapes and stuff with this new series. So um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You know, that brings up a question I've been meaning to ask you. So your figurative work is really outstanding. Um, you. Do you draw that freehand or do you use any kind of, you know, like uh, artographs or anything or photographs or is this actually freehand drawing? It depends on the piece. All these, I, uh, well, most of them and most of the major um, structures I started here as photographs. Okay. And I'll spin this back around. And then what I do, because my the little training that I have from school before I dropped out to be in a rock band, um, <laughs> <laughs> rock. <laughs> uh, I studied I studied life drawing, and uh, I started studying painting and got a little bit down that road. Um, I was studying acrylic, and we were going to get into watercolor and and oil, but I never I never got that far. <laughs> so, but one thing that I did, one skill that I was able to acquire while I was at school um, was figure study. And so, um, and I've been really lucky over the years to have um, lots of men and women as friends who were willing to like sit there and sit still for long periods of time. But in mm -hmm. the event that our world continues to get faster and faster and people have less and less time and all these things, it's been a really wonderful thing to um, just actually just photograph friends mm -hmm. and I study the image on my computer for as long as I want. So what would have been maybe a two hour study can turn into like a 10 hour study. Sure. Um, and so the, the, the pieces I just showed uh, are all based on, I just basically stare at the image and create like that. Okay. So yeah, so you are though, but you're, I mean, even though you're looking at an image on a computer, you're freehand drawing. That's really yeah. impressive. I mean, the, the human body, there's it's nothing really harder. Awesome. Yeah, it's you really get hard. one little bit off and it's, it's and screwed it up. Weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 nothing harder. So tell us a little bit, uh, the title of the show that you chose was Impossible Knots, K-N-O-T-S. Uh, what, tell us where you came up with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I was working, and, and working in my process, I suppose, and I, one thing that I suppose a through line um, in, in most of my work over the last 10 or 15 years has been these kind of um, obsessive lines sort of spilling onto each other and revealing different landscapes and moving in and out of, of arms and hands and people's hair and all these things. It's just something that has always uh, felt necessary to, mm -hmm. to the imagery that I produce. And it started to make sense to me over the last couple of years like what I was attempting to do while I was in the process I wasn't thinking about it too much I was more just sort of like going I, I know you can relate to that when you're absolutely when you're painting you're just kind of in it you know you're yeah in the moment um but it's as I've stepped back from some of the pieces and, and and been able to reflect on some of them it's occurred to me that uh I have in me as I think that most everyone does, we have uh, a set of experiences or sometimes it's half of a lifetime of experiences, both good and bad. And they, and they work like, um, like tendrils, like ropes. We get kind of tied up in them and things get kind of constricted and tied. And so often we describe uh, emotions as these feelings of they're like knots that are tied up in us. And I feel like what a lot of us are attempting to do, myself in particular, is uh, it, it's a slow, a meticulous untying of those knots in an attempt to have new and novel experiences. So, because so much of our experiences can get kind of caught in areas where our knots get too dense. So in these paintings, I feel like what I've been attempting to do is allow those knots just continually unfold. And I feel like I am unfolding and unwinding with them as I let them out onto paper and onto canvas. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And you know, it really makes sense now with what we're experiencing. Think about the knots that we weren't even aware of that we've yeah. got in our lives that just consume us. I mean, I think the thing that, that's driven home to me is that I just didn't realize 
how many distractions there are. And yeah. so this has been really cool. That's a big knot, you know, the, the knot of constant distraction. So it's been kind of nice to untie that and see what it, you know, see what we get. So for um, sure. You oh. know, I feel like those, those, those knots, so to speak, um, are things that can have, um, cultural implications as well. I think that cultures act basically like scaled up versions of persons, you know, culture really just is, uh, when enough people act in a certain way and we have a chance to say like, well, there it is. This is what we do. This is our culture, but cultures are not immune from getting, uh, uh, locked up in places. Um, yeah. And so we're seeing, like you said, it's a, it's a really, it's a scary time. I have to say that first it's scary and it's uncertain and, um, there's a lot of tragedy in it, but, um, what I'm trying to do, I suppose one of the things that I've been trying to do to keep myself, um, hopeful and optimistic is to, is to once again, look for, uh, any silver lining that could exist in here. And, and maybe one of them is an opportunity for us to, um, look at some of those things, some of those areas where we're truly getting caught, some of those areas where culturally and interpersonally, we're kind of fragile. And yeah. all it took was just a, a little nudge from Mother Nature and the whole thing just comes crumbling down. It's like maybe we should be building structures and infrastructures in our culture and interpersonally that are stronger than that. And so maybe that's the opportunity here, you know? Yeah, makes sense. Hey, uh, by the way, we just um, kind of also looking at, we're getting a lot of great comments as we're doing this, but someone just asked, are the pieces for sale today? And the answer is absolutely, yes, they are. Um, and if you haven't checked out the, you know, the catalog yet, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go on the Samuel and Gallery's site, like I said, and there's a link to the catalog. Uh, the prices are there and everything. And basically, if you wanna buy something, either email us at info at or uh, call the main number, because all those are being forwarded to our, our uh, gallery director, Kristen Rivas, and our number is 214 nine six five nine oh two seven so anybody man there's some great pieces and one of the things i love brandon too is that you not only do the big works and you know the more expensive works but you really do a number of smaller pieces and they're originals but they're very well priced and so i love that you're you give the opportunity to your you know you have a great fan base with your music but your art is just as exciting and it's great for for your music fans to be able to buy something if they want a piece of you they got it it's it's very yeah. affordable yeah I, I appreciate the fact that um i have this opportunity to do what i do and i also appreciate you guys um hosting me at samuel Lynn. it's such a great gallery if people it, anywhere in the world ever get a chance to travel to dallas sometime i hope that you do yeah uh, that would be great stop by samuel Lynn in, in dallas because it's a beautiful gallery and they don't just have my work they also have uh some amazing photographers they have jd's work your work is amazing jd so thank you uh, i appreciate you guys so much for hosting me these past few years it's been awesome oh yeah yeah no we, we're so excited and it was fun too because uh you know we work with some really really big international artists and we've had some huge shows here but it was kind of uh it was uh eye-opening to see your first show and you know humbly i know you're very humble but you are a true rock star and <laughs> i mean the gallery we literally we had people light it up at two o'clock in the afternoon to meet you and by the time you got here at five we had about 400 people in line just to you know to meet and take a picture with you and so it was kind of cool. We had over a thousand people that day, which was nuts, but that was really cool to you know, see the power of, of music and that kind of fame. But the thing is, I, I really do, um, I feel like you are such a talented musician, such a talent, but it's so cool. I really feel like you're equally talented in your art. And that's rare. Usually, you know, as artists and, you know, I'm a musician as well. And I, I feel like I do a pretty good job of music, but I have to be honest, I'm a way better painter, okay? But with you, I think you're, you're pretty equal in both. So that's kind of cool, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love painting. I, I absolutely adore it. And I know you can relate because it, it does something uh, highly indescribable. I mean, we could try and describe what, what, what painting does. And I know that people who are watching and listening out there, there are a handful of you that also paint and know what we're talking about. But 
even if you, the thing is, is you don't have to be good at it, you know, because when we start painting, none of us are good at it. And it's still, there's something you're like, whoa, I don't understand why this is fun, but it certainly is very enjoyable. I think maybe to, if I could put it as simply as possible, it's just that we have this opportunity to, um, to make something and to just to just to watch a, a piece of our our, our uh, the, the part of us that is indescribable get described in front of us. It's almost mm -hmm. like you can sort of spill your thoughts onto something. And like I said, you don't have to be good at it, but you can step back from it and look at it and be like, wow. I was feeling very blob today. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. or if it gets more advanced, you're like, I was feeling very intricate and, and um, figurative. Or, you know what I mean? Like, there's so many yeah. ways that it, can, it can turn out. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes you just want to set them on fire and never look at them again. But there's sometimes yeah. you're like, I need to show this to people. <laughs> yeah, we call, that, we call that the burn pile. <laughs> right. You know, you know it's funny, though, um, every, being an artist, it's, it really is like, if you have a great day in the studio, man, when I have a great day in the studio, my feet aren't touching the ground, you know, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm walking out. If I have a rough day in the studio, oh man, there's have just ever. <laughs> no worse feeling. The other thing, you know, the thing I like, and maybe you find this as well, uh, with music, music for the most part is a social uh, creation. I mean, you have a band, you have musicians, you have all the different personalities that you're constantly dealing with. What mm -hmm. I loved when I started painting was, guess what? I'm the band. You know, right. it's just you, the canvas, and whatever your medium is. And I don't know, there's something about that that's really freeing. Yeah, it's true. You, you get to be the, uh, the judge, jury, and the executioner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, and there's, there's something to be said, though, for I think that's one of the reasons why I've found a lovely balance between music and visual art is that I also love um, being in a committee in a room with four other guys where we bounce ideas off of each other. And it, it creates something highly unique that none of us would be able to do left to our own devices, you know, and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why it's, it's fun and it's valuable. With painting, it's like I get to be the dictator and I come in here and it's yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. <my> paintings, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep it's but true well so here's what we're thinking so we only have an hour in this broadcast we need to cut it off at the end of the hour but um what i thought we'd do now is maybe go through a few of the pieces that we hung up on the wall sure. and just have you talk about them would that be okay i'll do just, my best okay let's just see let's start i'm gonna yeah. switch this around to the other thing so we can look at the I want to look at I want to look at this one first. Mm. So this is the biggest piece we've gotten in so far. It's actually mm -hmm. gorgeous. It's it's paper and it's under glass. Yeah, that's pretty good. Can you tell us anything about this this work? Let me see if I can get the reflection off of there. There we go. That's how's that? Yeah, that's good. And you're you're welcome to go up to it even closer because the I think the the fruit of this piece is really in the detail because I, I went, I went in, <laughs> I went in on this painting. Oh my God, yeah, look at that. Um, it's its own little universe. Yeah, this piece is called Chrysalis. Um, and if uh, any of you watching remember from our early biology classes in school, uh, the Chrysalis is the place that the, uh, the lovely humble caterpillar uh, ends up and is sort of gestating or in a liminal state before it becomes a butterfly. And in the chrysalis, it's really just like a, it's like a sack of goo, uh, hence the, that term, like the liminal state. And this painting, I actually did it, you know, maybe six or seven months ago. It's been a minute, um, but it, it's interesting looking at it right now and the title of it, because it's, it, definitely feels like culturally we are in a kind of a liminal state. We're in like a chrysalis of sorts. We're in a, this uncertain, unformed mass. And um, in my, not to get cheesy on you, but I'm going to anyway, and my deepest please, hope- Please, please do. My deepest hope is that we will emerge a kind of, uh, uh, we, will, we will metamorphize, you know, and we'll, and we'll turn into something better and stronger. 
um, and bigger than we were before we went in. Yeah. So, well, why not? Why not? I mean, that's really what life is about, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're here to be challenged and it's, mm. it's not so much the challenge that's important as how we respond to it. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that just seems to be a huge part of our experience as human beings. God, yeah. look at the detail on this, dude. This is yeah, amazing. I would go nuts if I did what you do. That is a lot of work. I was really oh. proud of the paper for hanging in there with me. It, it's, it has some bowing on the edges, but that I, I kind of have come to uh, enjoy the little ruffles in the paper that were created. It really was stress of as much ink as I put onto that. That, that I think so. little ridges, but I think they're cool. I think they add. No, that. yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing, uh, you know, especially when you're talking about handmade art, I mean, you don't want it to be perfect like it came off a printing press and it's perfectly smooth and everything else. You want to see the, you know, you want to see some of the, what happens in the physical process of creating the work. That's what I love. Yeah, this mm -hmm. piece, guys, I'm telling you, you, you got to come see this in the fall in person. This is just stunning. All right, so that's your large watercolor. Let's just kind of go through here and look at some of the oils, Brandon, that we've got on the wall. Here's, right. here's the first one. I'm gonna forget some of the titles. Of Dude, these. I can't remember my name, <laughs> the titles, it's okay. They're in the catalog though, if you guys wanna look it up at home. Yeah, and I'm going to post the catalog as well. So there'll be lots of places people can can go to see it. Um, okay. It's really not the catalog was amazing, by the way, you guys did a great job with the virtual kind of flipping through the pages. I thought that was really cool. Well, that's that's our director, Chris, and she put all that together. So Chris, I know you're home of watching. Great job with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is uh, it's acrylic and oil pastel. And acrylic being the kind of base. And then once the base dried, I started going in with the oil pastel. And this one is probably one of the most layered that I did on canvas. It started off very differently. And I kept sort of adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting. And it, there was a moment where it, I kind of just stopped. And I stepped back from it. And I was like, you're done. I just, there, I don't know how to describe it. And there's a feeling when you just know you're done with a piece. And mm -hmm. to some people, it might look unfinished. But I, I feel like. I feel like it's done. <laughs> I think it's awesome. And you know, that's one of the things, I think it's one of the hardest things as artists. I don't know about you, but I love the creative process so much that one of the, the hardest things for me when I was starting to paint was learning when to stop. Because you'll yeah. be sitting there and you'll kind of be looking at a piece and basking in your glory by glory, as mm -hmm. I would say it. And then mm -hmm. I'll just put that one more little dollop of paint on there and it throws the whole thing off. And the next thing you know, I'm spending hours fixing it. So right, after right. a few years of doing that, I finally learned, okay, when it's time to stop, step away from the brushes. Yeah. And quit <laughs> painting. <laughs> That's stop. right. So, so here's the next one. I should probably, uh, one of these, I, I, I remember the title for a couple of them and this one is escaping me as well. Um, it's okay. I mean, people, again, it's all in the catalog. So if yeah. you guys want to look through, check it out. Beautiful this, though. What? This yeah, one go is ahead. also uh, acrylic on canvas with oil pastel um, embellishments. And uh, I believe there's like acrylic graffiti marker paint in there somewhere too. Um, Cool. And what I was attempting to do with these pieces on canvas was uh, knowingly break from certain uh, aesthetic habits that I've gotten into over the years, which is really like, um, I have a tendency to want to uh, make them, make my paintings very precise and I can get overly precious about them. And so what I've been enjoying about the oil pastel is that it's really messy and unpredictable, kind mm -hmm. of like watercolor. And so I've been allowing for the mess to invade some of the precision and trying to find a kind of a balance between those two worlds. Cool. And I guess, um, and it's called, that one is called Orange Tumbles West. Grace just found it on the catalog. Let's just go in here real quick. I want people to see some of the detail work. Look, like every one of those white lines you hand drew. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's, 
dude, how do you stay sane? That's just amazing. There's so many hours in each one of your pieces. It looks like I'm matching the painting right now. Yellow, black, white. Oh, look at that. Good job. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we just got a question. I saw one come across. Will there be prints? And yes, we are actually launching one today. We'll get to that here in just a few minutes. We'll tell you guys about that. Mm. So this piece is called uh, Won't You? And um, I did it alongside another piece, which I'm sure is somewhere here in the next couple of pieces. But um, it was sort of an, uh, an accompanying piece to one called Sing Me a Lullaby. So the idea kind of oh. led into a whole other canvas. It was sing me a lullaby, won't you? Oh, you know what? I see it now down the wall. We'll put those two together. I didn't realize okay. that. You know what? Let's show that one next, though. Let's show that. We'll skip this Perfect. one for a second. And then we'll get, for the show, we'll have these things properly done. But, so yeah. this is the one you were talking about, the companion yeah. piece? Bye. This was one of the first pieces I did in this series. And... Um, it was one of the first ones where, like I was saying, I allowed for that more, uh, I allowed for that, that, that mess of sorts to invade the, the want for things to be so precise. And I really enjoyed the way that it turned out, kind of striking that balance. Yeah. And then I started chasing that feeling. It's really nice. I love it. Thank I you. love the, I love the, the, the drips. I mean, it is, you're kind of stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit there. I love that. Mm. Okay, here's, the, here's another one in the series. And uh, this one, I believe, is called Peregrine. Peregrine, you got it. Grace just yeah. checked it. Yeah, look at Someone that. Says, I want to be one of your art pieces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sing me a lullaby, won't you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, where man. I live um, in the Santa Monica Mountains, there are, um, it's really beautiful to just sit and look outside and there's um there are like hundreds and hundreds of birds around and a, a bunch of them are what we call raptors so they're like um they 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 prey on other creatures and they're they're quite violent and intense but they're really beautiful and so um i watch these red-tailed hawks fly around and sometimes they play but i watch them hunt too mm. so i think i was inspired by their their weird mixture of play and and violence with this piece, so I called it Peregrine. That's great. Okay, let's keep going. We just talked about that. We got a couple more of these, uh, this series. And what's cool, this whole series, you did a really great series of these. They have a similar feel. Each one's different, but they're all the same size. They look really good on the wall, Brandon, as a set. Mm. Someone Thanks. should get this as a set, I think. Do you remember yeah, this one? Are. This one's called Bearded Old Man. <laughs> Just for the record, what I'm titling these pieces, um, sometimes the title is, it, it reveals itself while I'm painting it. And then sometimes I, when I know the painting is done and I step back from it, the first thing that kind of flashes into my head is what I call it. So in this case, I stepped back and I was like, wow, you look like a bearded old man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I love can, it. Yeah. All right. Got one more of the uh, canvas series that we have on the wall right now. Mm. This is nice. I love this. The mono, it's very monochromatic, but boy, there's a lot of depth in it. Yeah, I also switched the process up a little bit with this one as well in that um, I used an X-Acto knife and I started cutting out a couple of pieces that I did on watercolor, with watercolor on paper, and then uh, fuse them to the canvas on top of is, the piece. Is that it? Top. Is that here? Let's see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, I didn't notice that. So I'm going to try to get up. Whoops. <laughs> Let's try to do it without destroying our rig here. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can literally, well, it's hard to see, but I can see yeah, where, yeah. right here, right? There's, there's yeah, one yeah. of them. Yeah. And so you applied that and then worked from there? Or did you do it like mid process or what? I did it kind of last. There was okay. like years before with like that one last brush stroke before you know you're done. And I stepped back from it and I knew it was close to being done. Mm -hmm. And then I looked over to my right and there was just this free floating uh, watercolor piece that I had done. And so I just yeah. dropped it. I love that. I, really, I didn't notice that, man. That's so cool. You know, that's the other thing too. Um, 
as equally important as knowing when to stop is also knowing when you're not done. Because yeah. sometimes literally it can be that one more stroke mm -hmm. or that one more element that just bam, brings it right. all into focus. So, right. okay, so let's move here. This is a, a beautiful set of four of your watercolors. Um, Grace, do you know the size of these? I'm just curious of the actual print. Now these are framed I people, think 16, obviously. If I'm not mistaken. What's that? I think they're 16 by 16. Okay, 16 by 16. So here's what we're doing. So when we do one of Brandon's shows, guys, we always uh, want to have, this is something that he does and I love it, but he does a beautiful print, a limited edition print that he hand signs each one. And we make it at a price that anybody can afford. And what we're doing, we're going to be taking this one right here. And this is, I believe, called lightning number two. And we are going to be doing a 20 by 20 print of this. It's going to be a limited edition of 200. And let me just set this down so I can talk without messing up. Just bear with me a second, guys. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so um, so what, what we've done is we're producing one that's 20 by 20 inches, which is a good size. And again, each one's going to be numbered and signed by Brandon, and they're going to be $175. So, um, and they're available now. If you guys want to go on the Samuel and Gallery site right now, uh, go to the shop tab at the top of the page, and it'll take you to the back, and this is already listed. It's lightning strike. And it's really first come, first serve. Now, one of the things is if you guys want to go ahead and get your orders in, I would do so. Because I know when we did Brandon's show, we sold out of the prints pretty quickly. But we're going to go ahead and start it today. Um, and here's the thing, guys. Because of what's happening with our suppliers and so forth, go ahead and get your order in. But we realistically probably won't start shipping them out till the end of the May, May or beginning of June. But this is going to make a magnificent print, Brandon. I'm really glad this is the one we chose. Yeah, so. I like that one too. It, I, I actually did this small series while uh, we were on tour this fall. Oh, you did? So, yeah. They, one That's thing cool. and fun is being able to bring kind of a small rig with me to be able to work while we're, while we're touring. Wow. That's, so we're all four of these done on tour? Yeah. These four people? That's really good to know. I think people would love that. And by the way, guys, so uh, we do have the, original, um, the originals available as well. Um, these are framed and already presentation ready. Uh, Grace, do you know how much we're going to be selling the originals for? Let's check that. But the, uh, the print, again, is $175, and they're for sale now. So as is anything in the catalog that we just put online today. But this is going to be great. I love it. So lightning number two original? Yeah, is, where is it? I can't read. So yeah, so the, the original is $2,650, $2,650. But um, imagine, and the last time you did the prints, man, the prints were remarkable. They, they look just like the original, just they were, they were prints, but that'll be $175. And, and just to be clear, guys, that is unframed but that will come in a plastic sleeve ready to, to mount and so forth. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I can't tell the difference between the, the prints and the original most of the time. <laughs> they come I know, it's, a, it's amazing. It really is. Um, okay, so let's, uh, I'm trying to think, let me go ahead and uh, get back to interview mode here. Let's see if we can get this. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, I like that. That's a good view. All right, so, um, we have uh, some time left. If anybody has any questions, like specifically right now, we've, we've got some time to take a few questions for Brandon. So why don't you type them into your Instagram thing there. Here's one, will the prints have original signature? Absolutely. Right, Brandon? Yep. Yeah, I got all kinds of time on my hands right now, so. <laughs> Can I order to be delivered in UK? Absolutely. Are the prints signed? Yes. I wish I could buy. Do so. <laughs> Let's see. All right. 
What is your favorite color to work with, Brandon? I haven't heard that question ever. What's your really? favorite color? Really? I get that all the time. <laughs> how, uh, how do you choose a favorite color? Do you have one? I don't know. I just sort of like, I, I, it's almost like a, like a divination process. Like I hover my hand over the deck and then I, a, a color attracts. But I have to say uh, that black is kind of amazing. I like the, uh, I love working with just blacks and whites and grays. Um, I, I, working in color is a relatively new process for me. Uh, I, um, for some reason, have been intimidated by it, probably because I, I don't have formal education um, in painting. But uh, as I experiment, um, it's been, it has been very enlightening. So that piece, Chrysalis, that big paper piece was me just basically like throwing every color I can imagine. It's behind you right now, yeah. Yeah, it's I like, see it, it's I like, love that. Like a rainbow piece of giant. Glowing, look at that, it's glowing back there. Here, where, how do you do the heart thing? I don't know. Yeah, look at that, here it is. <laughs> uh, someone just asked, uh, do you ever, are you ever inspired by your dreams? Quite often, actually. Um, <laughs> The stuff that emerges from my dream time, though, is usually uh, sound. I've, I've gotten the melodies and the lyrics and sometimes even the music for quite a few songs that I've recorded, um, both on solo stuff and incubus stuff from dream time. There's a, uh, I'm sure everybody knows, you know, that, that space right before you wake up where you're not fully awake, where you're, you're kind of in this, it's like a quasi lucid state, but you're still technically asleep. I have uh, had moments throughout my life where I can, uh, knowing, I know I'm still mostly asleep and starting to wake up, but I can take the dream material and sort of pull it into the waking state. It's a little bit like the, the nightmare on Elm Street, you know, when they like the dream warriors, they learn uh, how to lucid dream and fight Freddy Krueger in their dreams. Did you ever see those movies, JD? I did. No, I, oh, I missed them. Sorry. Anyway, it's 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 a, it's a, it's kind of like a lucid dreaming thing, but not quite that fancy. But a, a lot of melodies and a lot of lyric stuff come from those places. Okay. Um, let's see, boy, there's a lot of great questions. I'm just not being able to grab them all. Oh, someone just asked, "Are you still an existentialist?" An existentialist. I was never an existentialist, actually. I I read a lot of uh, existentialist philosophers as a kid. Sartre and, and those yes. guys. Yeah, yeah. I uh, don't know if I have an ism or an ist or an ology attached to uh, any kind of um, personal philosophy of mine. What I like to do is um, absorb as much available information and then try and um, amalgamate uh, a, a sovereign thought out of that. So yeah. I have read some of the existentialists, but I don't, I would not call myself an existentialist. No. Okay. Yeah. I would have been surprised with that actually. It's, it's kind of a, uh, basically what the thing that I got from it, what is there's just no point to life basically. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> just kill yourself and get it over with, you know, right. I don't think with that's you or, or me or anybody around here. Yeah. Uh, Oaks, I've had a couple of times people asking, um, how, how do you create the black and white lines? Um, it depends. Usually, uh, I start with, um, a black space. I'll show you guys really quick. Uh, so with these that I'm just starting to work on, I, I put down like a, a kind of black landscape of sorts. And then I usually bring in some, some whites in certain kinds of layers. And I try and purposefully create, um, like confusion and chaos for on the piece and then I start to see little lines that are revealing themselves. And then oh, that, yeah. eventually, that eventually turns into this type of a thing where I start following lines or I start imagining ones where they, where I thought they should be. Um, so it's a little bit of using negative space, but then a lot of it's just sort of like, you know, looking into clouds and seeing teddy yeah. bears. Yeah, very cool. Uh, someone asked, does your music inspire your art? Um, I, I think that there is a kind of, there's definitely a conversation between the, the mediums. Um, when I 
listen to music and when I'm experiencing music and writing music, I definitely, my head gets filled with imagery, my head gets filled with colors and shapes and things like that. And that's honestly what helps me write lyrics and, and things like that. But, um, and then there are some times when I'm painting and I start humming disparate melodies that end up turning into songs as well. Hmm. So I, I suppose, yes, the answer to the question is in, in a simple way, yes, but it is a little more complicated than that too. Okay, I uh, got another question. Does meditation affect your painting? I think it does. I think it does, and uh, that's not the reason why I meditate. I don't necessarily meditate or have meditative practices uh, for any express purpose other than to um, have a kind of um, a moment in the day where uh, I, I sort of uh, unplug, for lack of a better term. I think it's important for everyone to have a moment in the day when they uh, sort of turn in, they, they, they switch the, the gaze inward. Um, and there are, you know, in sort of pop spirituality and pop psychology, a lot of people will sell meditation or meditative practices to you um, under the guise that they will do this for you and it'll, it'll help you with this and help you with that. And I don't think that's the reason why any of us should do those things. I don't think we should need a reason to uh, unwind or unplug um, once or a couple of times a day. Uh, all that being said, there, uh, there, there have been things that um, have emerged as a result of having um, a meditative practice and a, a couple of meditative practices throughout the day. And one of them is that uh, a lot of the, the meaningless chatter in my mind um, has quieted down. And it's almost like there's been uh, space created for more meaningful uh, internal conversations to happen. And as a result, that, I think that translates into art. Um, a lot of us get really hung up on the on the mindless and the meaningless chatter and the noise that is going on in our brain, and I feel like that ends up being kind of distracting mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of people. It's actually really common to be distracted by your thoughts, and I would much rather uh, be uh, inspired by my thoughts and be like, "Ooh, interesting idea. Let me go see if that works," you know, and let me chase that thought down a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Absolutely. I've been meditating for 20 years and it's nice. I don't know. I can't imagine not doing that. It just gives you a place of respite, you know, from that squirrel cage running around in your head. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we had another question about the four uh, watercolors we're looking at here. The one being um, lightning number two, which is the print we're going to release. Uh, they asked if, they, if we were going to do prints of the other ones. And at this time, not really. We're, we're just going to do the one print. And, but we are doing 200. So they're, you know, if you get your order in, you should be fine. Yeah. Um, let's see. How, what, was your, what was your first inspiration, music or art? Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it was uh, probably art. But that, honestly, I don't know if I could answer that question accurately because my very first memories of being um, inspired or, or, or awed by something, they're, they're, they're very close to each other. One of them is musical. Some of them are musical. I remember sitting under the piano while my mom would play a piano and sing. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have very, very early memories of... Um, falling asleep um, at my grandfather's house with my brothers. We would sleep on the floor in these sleeping bags and my grandfather would always come in and play us uh, songs on this beautiful nylon string guitar. And I remember, uh, I don't remember how old I was. I just remember uh, being very much in awe, like kind of drifting off into sleep as he would sort of play these songs softly on his guitar. Um, but then I also remember um, seeing my mom's paintings, my mom, uh, used to paint quite a lot and uh, looking through her her life drawing books and her painting books and um, so a lot of those memories are kind of tangled up with each other so I, mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm attracted to both very that's much. Great, I mean, great memories yeah 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 <laughs> what a great way to grow up 
Let's see. So look at, boy, I, guys, I'm sorry. I can't get to all the questions, but I'm grabbing as many as we can. Uh, the, there was a question, how many prints? There are going to be 200, and they are for sale. At, they were released today. Um, what inspired, well, it's going pretty fast. Oh, I saw that one. What inspired Bruja? What's your guilty pleasure during this self-isolation? That's a great question. Do you have a guilty pleasure? <laughs> I don't know. I don't experience much guilt, um, but I, the closest thing to a guilty pleasure, um, wow. God, I don't know. I honestly don't really speak that language to tell you the truth. Like it is, It's great, it's, it's, nothing wrong with that. vegan ice cream count? I mean, I, I, I don't really feel guilty about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, guilt, what a waste anyway. I love it, yeah, well, that's good. What's, I, see, I see one here, what's your spirit animal? Oh, um, uh, what's that? What's the, there's a thing that I saw recently. It was it was like half zebra, half donkey. I think they call it a zonkey. <laughs> half, what, what was that? Sorry, what was it? Like it was half zebra, half donkey. I, I think that's. I think a zonkey is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, what, what was the question, Grace? Do you have? Do you have a piece or a series you feel closest to? Oh, that's an interesting question. Usually it would be um, something that I had done recently. And I have to say that these, these watercolor, these figurative pieces that I'm going to be sending to you guys, um, hopefully sooner than later, uh, I feel attached to and that uh, I feel like I, I kind of broke into a different part of uh, a, a new process that I hadn't experienced before. And they turned out differently than I had anticipated and I'm happy with the way they turned out. So I do feel quite bonded to them. Cool. So it's an interesting part of the process is to be able to like let go of the paintings. I'm sure you can relate to that too. When you're I absolutely like, can. Bye. Yes, I can. Bye, I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Have a good journey. <laughs> Smell you later. <laughs> yeah. um, so someone just asked again, how many prints are there? There are 200. And if and they ask where can they buy them, go on to the Samuel Lynn site, which is Samuel and then Lynn is spelled L-Y-N-N-E dot com. And just go to the shop page and you guys can, it's easy as that. Just put in your info and you'll be ordered. Um, let's see, part of the process, what would, give me some good ones, let's see. Do you have any pieces that you could never sell? Ah, that's a good one. Do you have any pieces that you could never sell? Never? That's a very strong <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah, that but is. Are, yeah, but there are pieces that I have chosen to keep here at the house with me. Um, actually, I can show you guys one if you'd like. Um, We'd love to see it. Hell yeah. It, it ended up being, uh, I, I did a book in 2006. Seven, I think it was 2007 called From the Mercs of the Sultry Abyss. And the cover of the book was um, this painting here. Let me spin you around here. Um, and it's not that it's like the greatest painting in the world. It just, yeah. for some reason it, and I did it probably 15 years ago. I've learned a lot about painting since then. So it, it's quite sort of rudimentary, but I, uh, I don't know why I attached to it. It's just basically a bleeding heart emerging above like skulls and roses <laughs> happy um, oh look check this out and i think my mom is watching but my mom painted that when she was in art school no way that's gorgeous she's so good it was a self-portrait of herself as the virgin mary while she was pregnant <laughs> oh man that is amazing yeah she's wow. i shouldn't be hiding it behind these things but she's so, <laughs> so talented yeah what is that oil it's oil yeah and it's it looks like, like it yeah patina on it it's so gorgeous which uh, which brings up a question have you ever worked in oil i know you're using oil sticks but actually oil itself oil no o the closest is oil pastel i've always wanted to work in oil and i feel like you and i may have had a conversation at some point where you were going to you were going to yeah i think i think we did and i think when you come back out we need to block out a day you know before you come and let's do some let's do some painting in the studio let's do some oil i've never even touched it to tell you the truth oh um, man I, could, yeah. I would love to do that. You would, it's, oil is magical. It's I'm just, 
I mean, it's alive. Think about it. It's made the foundation our organic seed oil. And right. literally, oil drives by, you know, that oil, you know, actually absorbs oxygen. And so mm -hmm. it's breathing. And, and oil paintings take so long to dry, they can take hundreds of years. So they're literally Incredible. breathing long after we're gone. I just like that. I like the thing that they're, yeah. they're literally, you know, living, really, in a, in a way. Yeah. I'm I'm with it. I'm with it on paper. It sounds theoretically. It sounds incredible. <laughs> it no, sounds we'll like do it when you come. When you come in the fall, we'll, we'll definitely we'll do an oil session. Uh, so another great question. Another great question. What do we have? What was your favorite part of creating the Impossible Not series? What was your favorite? What part? Like the what was the favorite part of, it, of creating the Impossible Not series? Yeah. And when do you know uh, you're finished? And and when do you know you're finished? Is the last part of that question finished with the series. Well, I thought I was finished. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then the world just changed. It was just, yeah. it was, I mean, I can't say enough about it. It's this, this is the strangest thing that I've ever experienced. I think probably we could all agree on that. This is the weirdest shit that's ever happened. Um, so it just shifted everything. And uh, like I said earlier, I, I'm, I'm kind of thankful that I, that I ended up getting more time because I, I thought I was done with this series, Impossible Knots, and it turns out I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So the universe bought me a little time. I guess there's yeah. one other area of silver lining. I think the universe has a sense of humor. I really do. I mean, just when we think we've got everything going, bam, there you go. Take yeah, that. It's let's, a, see it's it. dark let's see how you do with that, dude. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's, yeah. uh, there's some, some incredible lessons from, uh, you, you've read about the Stoics, I'm sure, um, Stoic philosophy. And uh, some of the lessons of the Stoics are really, they're so applicable right now, and especially like the kind of central uh, idea around um, not being able to control what happens, but controlling your reaction to what happens. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's this is this. If there was ever a moment for that kind of stoic wisdom, it's right now. Yeah, absolutely. Someone asked a little bit earlier. Do you have a favorite painter? A favorite I know besides besides me or you, but besides JD, of course. Yeah, um, else? You know, there's not one painter. There's also not one musician. I um, I, I feel it's, I'm constantly being blown away by people who. Are, are coming out and all, as well as people who have, you know, long since passed, but a couple of artists that um, have been very uh, inspiring and inspirational to me over the years have been um, Egon Shaley, uh, um, Aubrey Beardsley is a big one. I, in fact, I have enjoyed Aubrey's work so much that I even had his face tattooed on my arm along with his. No <laughs> so way. One wow. Of his uh, okay had that for a long time. Yeah, I was really, really taken by his work um, and still continue to be. Uh, he, his, his work was just so ahead of its time. He was so ahead of the curve. Um, but yeah, there's, there's just a couple. Okay. How about you, who, what artists have, have uh, kind of- For me? You? Yeah. Uh, you know what, I would have to put at the top of my list, Picasso. Uh, one of the things I loved about him was just the breadth of his work. Mm -hmm. And just when people would think, oh, yeah, you know, they've got it figured out what he, he's doing to go, bam, you know, and then right. hit you with something. And I remember a story, uh, his most famous painting, probably the most famous from a historic standpoint, is Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, mm -hmm. which was the one of the five women uh, that he'd been studying African face masks, and he put these horrific faces and there are stories of when he was working on that in his studio that people literally ran screaming from his studio. They were so freaked out by it. He must and have so, been so thrilled. I like that. What's that? Yeah. They said he must have been so thrilled at that reaction. He's like, oh, I've yeah. done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he used it. He would keep it, you know, turned away. But, but uh, I was watching a documentary the other night. And they credit that painting with really probably the most significant turning point painting in uh, modern art. It, it just totally set the stage for all the abstract work that came after it. But no, I'd have to say Picasso's at the top. And then the other one really, uh, but he was more than just an artist, was Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, because of the, the limitless 
searching of his mind. I mean, just looking at everything in life in, in a new way and uh, yeah. just exploring it to its fullest. So I, I would say, although I love the Impressionists, all of them, Monet, Renoir, and all that, yeah. but I'd say Picasso and uh, Leonardo, just from the sheer breadth of their genius. Yeah. Those are good ones. They don't really yeah. make them like that anymore, do they? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could either be Picasso or Bob Ross. I'm trying to decide. I don't know. Oh, so guilty pleasures. Bob Ross. I, I like a couple of nights ago, I couldn't sleep and I saw the Bob Ross show on Netflix and I watched like seven episodes. Really? So, yeah. Dude, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I, I loved him. And, you know, I'm kind of a, I just love that anyway. But last night, I started while well, this thing is going on on Friday nights and tune in uh, at 530 in uh, Texas time. Yeah. I'm doing a happy hour live with JD and I'm painting from the studio every Friday at 530 live okay. for the you know, foreseeable future. Uh, yeah. But one of the things is I feel like I'm channeling Bob Ross because I'm not my, my stage performances where, you know, I'll introduce Welcome to the Crown. But then once I start painting, that's it. You know, I just go yeah. start to finish. But in this, I can kind of talk about what I'm doing and stuff. And I heard you had an experience. You, you just went like kind of random last minute live painting a deal a, a while back. And didn't you have like, like 10,000 people tune in or something like that? I don't know how many people tuned in, but it was, uh, I was painting here and um, my girlfriend just, she just kind of nudged me. She's like, you should go live right now. This, is, this looks really cool. And I was like, ah why it's boring she's like she, i think she may have referenced bob ross she's like people love this stuff like yeah. let, let me just let me just film you so uh I, I i turned it on and then she helped me out a little bit and um, hopefully people liked it i don't know i wasn't as I love chatty as bob ross, though. <laughs> yeah i think the only thing is i'm gonna have to get a wig but you know I, i'm not ready okay guys <laughs> we've only got about four minutes left so just want to kind of wrap up what we've been talking about. First of all, thank you for everybody that's tuned in. And thanks for the questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to everybody, but we got to some great ones. But Brandon's show was postponed from March, and we will be having the full exhibition sometime this fall. Date to be determined. Right now, if you go on the Samuel Lynn Gallery's website, that's samuellynn.com, you can see his full exhibition catalog of what we have so far. And those pieces are for sale. So you can go ahead and be buying those in the meantime. But this was just a way to, to give you a taste of what the show was going to be and where it's going to be. And you know what, Brandon, like you said, now you're working on a whole additional body of work. So I think it's just going to be bigger and greater. So I'm we're so super excited. It. It's going to be so good to see you and other human beings in the flesh. <laughs> yeah, ah, it's kind of scary, isn't it? A little it's bit, scary. but I, I, yeah, I'm into it. <laughs> oh, and we did, we, I, I do need to do a shout out. Brandon, could you say hi to Adam and Yolanda? I believe they're the couple that bought the first piece today, the, the four set. So would you say hi to them? Hi, Adam and Yolanda. Thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the piece. All right, guys, and, and just remember, there's 200 limited editions. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone, but they are for sale now. Um, man, this is, Brandon, this has been awesome. Thank you for sharing time with us and with everybody. And we're, you, we're honored. We are honored to represent you as a, a you. fine artist. So thank um, you. The honor is mine too. Thank you so much, JD. Oh, Mission. you're so welcome. Well, well namaste, stay. everybody. Stay, wait, li well, wait, that's hook em horns. I can't get the, oh, there it is. Live long and prosper, my friend. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time. We'll be tuning in. Check out our site. Brandon, thank you, my friend. Thanks, JD. Have a great night, man. Bye.